welcome to Anime Watch Club, a bi-weekly group discussion and reviewer, the host of the What Do You Say Anime podcast, nominated and voted show that we haven't seen, or shows that will hopefully lead to a great discussion. On today's episode, the I promise we're here for wings, but could you please punch our point card holders of the What Do You Say Anime podcast, we'll be reviewing the first season of the 2014 anime Space Dandy. Let's meet today's out-of-this-world characters. First up, J-Factor. He's a J in a factor. I'm not quite sure how this one works, though. Jay, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm ready to be on the Space Dandy Defense Force. Me too. Let's do it. Next up, he's the meow to my dandy. We got Cat. Cat, how's it going? I am on the exact opposite team. <laughs> Should be a good time. Our first moderator of the night. I said he can come back when he has huge tits and a big ass. We have Miles. Miles, how's it going? My favorite line, maybe in anime history. Um, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I this show confused me. There were times where I was so elated, and then there were times where I feel like it punished me for that. But overall, it was a show we watched, and it it wasn't the worst one or the best one. We're here to talk about it. It's Space Dandy. Fantastic. I can't <laughs> wait to get the comparisons between Space Dandy and non Baka and Pat. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome guys to Cat Week. This is Cat Week. It's the show we ended up picking for our good friend and co-host, Cat. Yeah, Space Dandy, which aired in 2014, winter 2014 specifically. Uh, I believe it has a second season that aired pretty soon after as well. Uh, we ended up watching the uh, the first one, at least for the club. And it's a... Uh, Show made by the guy who did Cowboy Bebop and Samurai Sh uh, Champloo and a couple other things as well uh, on top of that. Uh, pretty famous uh, famous director, uh, Shinichiro Watanabe, more specifically. And uh, yeah, why don't we uh, do our first impressions of the show? Uh, Miles, why don't you start us off? Yeah, so what do we do? First three episodes? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. If you're watching this show, I, I will say the first three episodes of the show are are the worst um so honestly if you make it through three episodes you, you might as well keep going in my opinion i i was not a fan of this through three episodes um there is quite amount good amount of like clever humor and good character interactions and stuff uh but just me personally the show is like very clearly not for me i don't like boob jokes there's a lot of boob jokes and so the humor just sort of missed me. And because of that, I don't, I don't think I would really recommend the show. Uh, but if that sounds good to you, I, why do I, I always do this? I'm like, I wouldn't recommend the show, but here's who I would recommend it to. Um, <laughs> but I mean, if you, do, if you do like a little more sort of sophomoric humor, I, I would watch it. I think that later episodes are um, good. <laughs> at times um sometimes they're amazing and sometimes they're almost amazing and i it, it there's good it's an interesting show to i don't know I, we'll we'll figure out how i feel about this later that's what this whole entire episode is for but yeah i i, I would say no but then like also maybe <laughs> for my recommendation cool okay thank you very clear answer <laughs> here to help <laughs> of course uh cat what about you this show is I completely understand why someone would recommend me this show. I completely do understand it since Nambak is one of my favorite shows. It seems like a show that would be right up my alley because it's because there's a lot of comedy on it and uh just some really fun uh fun interactions at times. But not to me. It is not a fun show. It was not a fun show for me to watch. I understand it's that people who would like like Chowder, for example, or uh, like the Adventures of Flapjack or something like that. Like Cartoon Network shows, like episodic Cartoon Network shows, really, really love this show. I liked that when I was a kid. I don't like that now. And even though it's a little bit, uh, even though it's like a little bit more short, more mature humor um then chowder and flapjack it still has that same feel to me and that's the reason why i stopped watching a lot of those shows i've so, never heard of those shows oh they're yeah. so funny i love Whoa. chowder chowder's goaded chowder's wow. yeah. 
I, Dex well, pretty I, solid too, actually. I'm like, got, I'm oh, like very legit. Interesting animation. I don't think I've ever had like such a. You should like watch a, like, Chowder. It's got a very interesting animation style. Yeah, like, I'll give it a go. So I, I guess I'm just used to older, like knowing older American animation, and like I must have just missed this. Sorry, yeah. continue, continue, cat. Flat, it's Flat just Jax is weird. Though. This show, it is. This show very much like. There, there are a few episodes that I really genuinely liked. The, well, but there were a couple. There was one and a half episodes that I really actually liked. But that's about it. Everything else was kind of like a sludge for me to get through. And it, I, I can't say that I recommend it. And I, and I understand that there are people that would really, really like this. I'm just not one of them, and I can't say that I can recommend it. Fair enough. All right. Uh, Jay, what about you? Yeah, I'm in the opposite boat. Um, you know, I'm the one who recommended this for Cat Week. So I want to start off by saying, Cat, I'm sorry that this wasn't something that was your taste. Because I guess I kind of misread your sense of humor or something like that, maybe. But I'm glad that you could see the vision, at least. So, you know, it wasn't like I wasn't trolling you and picking something that you wouldn't like on purpose. That's... Besides for punishing Johnny for making us watch a Remo, that's not the type of person I am. I will uh, say, while I was watching this, Jay, I, I thought to myself, I bet Kat is enjoying this. So, <laughs> I, 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 I don't think you're off, like, on the, you know, like, it, it was a well-intentioned miss, I will back yeah. you up on. Um, but to get that out of the way, my apology to Kat there, which is sincere. This is not... The first three episodes are definitely the worst part of this show. I will fully admit that. However, I think by nature of the show being episodic, if you hear this and you go, well, then I don't want to watch the first three episodes, then don't. You don't have to. That's what's the cool part about this show, is you could just catch it on Toonami any random Saturday night, any random episode, and it doesn't really matter where you fall into it. Unlike, like... When me and Pete went to Las Vegas, shout out my boy Pete, we were okay. watching, me and Trent, shout out my boy Trent, ended up watching Naruto and One Piece in the hotel room, and I didn't know what the fuck was going on in One Piece, because guess what? Plot for 500 episodes. Space Sandy could go on for 500 episodes, and you'd be fine just hopping in whatever, probably. That's all I'm saying. I think that people who are kind of looking for, like, a lot of internal consistency in this sort of thing, like... I don't blame you for wanting it necessarily, but it's kind of looking for the wrong thing whenever this is a love letter to a genre that is all about, like, ass pulls, more or less, which is to say, like, pulp sci-fi stuff. If you're a fan of, like, old-school sci-fi pulp stuff like Buck Rogers, or you like Futurama, or you like um, Star Trek, even but, you know, a bit raunchy, like maybe Star Trek Lower Decks or something, then I would definitely recommend this if you're, like, a sci-fi fan in general. I think that maybe... I don't know. I think that maybe people who dislike it, it's just a genre difference where maybe the genre, like, satire of sci-fi might not be for them as a whole. No offense, obviously. Like, I just... That's... It's... It's kind of archetypical of a lot of the genre, is what I'm trying to say. So, yeah. Pete, what about you? I think a really good thing what Space Dandy does is, I think you'll know after the first episode if it's for you or not. At least that's kind of like how I felt. I, I did have a lot of fun with this. I thought the first three episodes were fun. I do think that the second half is better than the first half. But kind of like what Jay was saying, I do think that you can kind of skip some episodes that maybe aren't the best if you find something that's like specific to your wants in the episode descriptions you can do that um i did like that i did like just how outlandish this show was like it's crazy i never knew what was going to happen in the episode and while i do think there are some episodes that are significantly better than others i thought this overall was like a really good time and the first three episodes i think kind of encapsulated kind of like how i was going to feel about this if you're a fan of something like prison school I feel like Space Annie's up for you where it's a little raunchy, kind of outlandish, a little all over the place, but I thought the ride itself was just really fun. So yeah, I would recommend this. Did you just sell me on prison school? Okay. <laughs> <All things. laughs> we we talked about this in like 
our trope episodes where like there's like some things that you just don't like but every sh- there's like a show or two that gets a pass or it's like i don't like fan service and etchy all this stuff in my shows but you know what prison school is like a nine out of ten so <laughs> see that actually kind of sorry i'll let like i don't mean to segue into a point immediately but like between this and golden boy i don't know about the rest of you guys but i, I thought kinda, about this like i feel like if a character is just perverted from the get-go and it's the vibe of the show it's way easier for me to look past it rather than like some perverted side character like in shonen a lot of the time sure. does that make sense yeah 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 so okay i i thought about why i fucked with golden boy but i didn't and admittedly, I fucked with Golden Boy less than a lot of people fucked with Golden Boy because it was too horny for me. Because I'm like, I, I have no idea why, but like maybe all the Catholic school I went to, but like, per- yeah, <laughs> pretty prudish about my media, but um, in some ways, I guess. Um, but like, I, I think, I think for me, the the thing that it's to me the humor in this was like a little lower hanging than in golden boy where i just think i liked like the setup and the jokes more like they're both juvenile humor and there's definitely a lot of like ooh, i like boobies in it but like in admittedly this joke probably hits better if you're a japanese speaker than an english speaker but their hooter stand-in is like literally just called boobies and it's like did you watch sub or dub by the way i watched the dub Okay, I watched the dub as well. I think okay, that's I, the way to go for it. I, the dub, I think, is very good, by the way. Like, I think all the voice actors did a did a good job. For me, like, and, like, the, the evil empire p- being Google, right? Like, and, like, oh, let's use Google Maps. Like, for me, that that stuff just didn't hit. Like, I, I, I don't know. I didn't find it funny. I found it a little eye-rolly. I, and I get the humor in it and, like, it could be funny, but it just, it's not for me, I guess. Whereas, so it might even just like, I, my brain might be being like, Oh, it was too horny for me. But when I think about something like golden boy, where there were scenes that I was, I thought were absolutely hilarious. Like golden boy was hornier, right? Like there was a, yeah. yeah, Like there's a scene where a woman's just masturbating on a bicycle. And I was like, Oh, that's a great scene. What a, <laughs> what, what, what a peak a, comedy. A woman spits on him and he goes out of his way to like stick his tongue. Now, in admittedly, I hated that scene. That might be my least favorite scene ever. <laughs> but um, so I think that my brain might just be immediately going to something I normally don't like, which is like it being too horny. But that actually isn't the problem that I have with it, if that makes sense. And I just need to sit down and and think about it more. Mm-hmm. Um because I like a lot of the shows that you saw. I don't mind that it's episodic. I loved a lot of the sci-fi elements. Um, you had, like, so many different cool alien species. Like, they did a really good job of having a diverse cast of aliens and stuff. They, they all weren't just humans with, that had different color skin or whatever. You know, and some neat areas. And, like, the one episode where, like, how they draw things based on how reality is functioning and, like, how it gets blurrier was, like, so cool. There was a lot of cool stuff there, but then I think back to that episode where they were like arguing about if showing your chest or underwear or whatever, and there was like a whole conflict with that, and it just, I don't know. And I just realized that we haven't done Pat's first impression yet. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. I was waiting. Um, <laughs> I, I just, I figured I would chime in eventually. Um, I'm kind of agree. I, I'm on Miles' side here, though, where I... I found just some of the humor to be very distracting and frustrating in uh, and detracting from some of the points that the show especially tried to make later on in this, like more, especially in the second half of the series. I also agree that the first three episodes were like, I was kind of like, Oh God, is what did I get? What what did I get myself into by voting for this? Um, But the show did grow on me eventually. Uh, I don't really have any interest in watching more of it, though. I think I found Dandy very, very annoying and uh, like just just oh, too over the top because like certain scenes he was really funny in, but it, it was just super hit or miss the comedy for me, which I think is why I didn't enjoy this comedy as much versus like, I, I don't know, because like I love Futurama and like I, I can see some comparisons between Fry and like Dandy, but I don't. Like I, I I don't know. I think that Fry is so much more cleverly written than 
than Dandy is, uh, uh, like as an example. In that, to be fair though, being less cleverly written than Futurama is like ninety-seven percent of shows. Yeah, like (laughs) oh for sure, grading puts out like forty-seven jokes a minute or something like that. Mm -hmm. No, it's it it, it's yeah. So it isn't a perfectly fair comparison, but like that's the only other like sci-fi comedy that I can think of that I really like, you know, and, and, and maybe it is the genre thing, but also like, I I don't know. I was just like, I, like Miles said too, like eye rolling at so many things that happened on screen where I was just like, like really guys, like, like you just had this beautiful moment of like, like, I I don't know. Episode five is what I, what I would fixate on. We'll talk about that later, but like that, that episode's ending just frustrated the shit out of me. Cause like, I, I don't care if it's in character I hate that character then, you know? So, um, uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's finish. I mean, again, it's not really spoilery because like, I guess that was another complaint I had that it was, or frustration in the first impression uh, I had was that nothing that happened on screen had consequence. It felt like less consequential than like, you know, Jesse and James getting blown away in every single Pokemon episode, you know, like, like you think eventually one of those falls from the sky would kill them, but no, they just keep coming back. The next episode, it felt that way for this show too, where like I wanted, it, like it, with the messages that it was try trying to convey or the things that it was trying to do, to have that so unserious other aspect of it made it difficult for me. But um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get into the spoiler section of the of the review and uh, let's talk about it. Uh, so yeah, we did we have like a very I guess we wanted to talk about it more broadly before we we talked about specific episodes. Like, like I, I don't know, was there any like specific thing in the show that you wanted to talk about? Or anyone wants? To talk about? Yeah. Um. So for me, uh, with Jay mentioning a lot of the other shows, it made me really think about like all of the other shows and why I like them more than I like this. Um. Part of it is I think that so for Futurama, it's very like Futurama is very well. Um, for Golden Boy, I feel like Golden Boy is just something about the comedy hits a little bit harder. And then for a lot of the other shows that are in this genre, in the genre of like sci-fi, specifically like uh, traveling through space and like and things like that, like a lot of the shows that it's trying to parody off of are like extremely serious, which isn't a bad thing, but I find that when I'm watching a show like this, I don't find the parodies that funny unless it's like extremely world wooden because a lot of times when you're watching shows like that, they tend to go on for a long time. And when it comes to that, like I don't find that fun, you know, like, and after like thinking about like Futurama specifically, I found it almost a little derivative of uh of a show like Futurama. Like you could see a lot of the a lot of the uh the inspiration from Futurama in uh Space Dandy. Uh you could see a lot of like the way that it's a way that like you have humanoid like aliens and you have like a very uh very outlandish aliens and like different aliens that do different things and it's just like I I don't think that the fact that it's episodic is a bad thing. Now to be fair um, there, like I said, there are episodes that it shines differently. It feels good. Like it feels, it feels like it's good to watch, but it's just one of those things that it's like, it tears me away from, from the show. I, I think me knowing that this was directed by the same guy that did Bebop detracted for it from me. Um, like to to like kind of accentuate your point there, Cat, where you're like comparing it between other more serious shows set in space or things like that. Like to me, it felt frustrating that this was the same director that did Bebop. Yeah, up and he and didn't direct it, so he, he wrote the first episode, but he didn't direct any of the episodes. I thought that all right, I can never understand. Mal so each they, like, story is written things. and directed by somebody different, different mm-hmm. animation director. Yeah. too. so I think that's like. It's one thing why I loved about this. The first episode, Dandy and them just die. <laughs> and like, I'm like, we have 23 more episodes to go to. Like, this is... That's, like, one thing that, like, hooked, hooked me to it was just, like, how outlandish and how crazy this was. I, I guess I could see that how that's maybe a detractor because, like, there's no real plot, no real storyline other than Dandy wants to go to boobies. 
and that's maybe not like the best thing, but I think like everything in between trying to get to movies to me is like this is my one piece. <laughs> so, the so one piece is that, boobies, but we already know what the one piece is. But the journey to the one piece is is a ride. It's the the journey to boobies were the friends we made along the <laughs> exactly. way. Exactly. I like so that's the thing though. Like it, in a lot of other shows, like it, it like for Futurama, for example, like it, it's pulling is pushing towards like different parts of the character like with fry and leela and a lot of these other a lot of these other characters you're seeing different parts of them that either like that either show their flaws or show their or show their positives i think this but is more like space balls than futurama yeah but i found space balls funny okay <laughs> like and i i think the issue that i'm having is i i it's hard for me to figure out what I don't like about it. It's something that's like, it's something that feels like it's so ingrained in my character that I can't say it. And I don't know how to explain it. Like it's just, yeah, it's just I, I, a feeling. Don't feel like, like most stories have like an end goal and like, you know, like what's going to come with it and stuff like that. But like the end goal here is like, super minor. It's going to a restaurant so you can see half naked women. And so, like, if you don't care about the 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 fluff in between, I feel like it's Harold very... and Kumar go to White Castle. Yeah, it's just, it's detracting, I guess. It's like, but um, Harold and Kumar he, he, go to White Castle is funny. Yeah, yeah you, but that's I mean, not the, the hum- point. Yeah, hum- humor. So, like, here I'm going to differentiate between two ways that nothing happens here. Right at the end of episode one and like episode four, they all die or become zombies or whatever. They live in a utopia after episode four. <laughs> they do. Um, there are no wars. Um, the I I don't I don't mind that. It's episodic. It it's fun. It's 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 whatever. You don't need to really care for things like episode thirteen. I think they play it too safe with wanting to always maintain the status quo, where you have like Kayla and I were watching it, and as QT went through his little arc there, I was like. Okay, this this fucking coffee maker is going to have been in love with the stupid cash register the entire time, and we're just going to forget that this ever happened if I were to watch more episodes. And that's where it loses me a little bit, I think, because we go through some pretty neat... They dive into the characters, interestingly, sometimes, and... I, I don't think that ever really get, like, you can have episodic stuff and have character development, but they want to keep going back to the status quo so that these things don't have large effects on how the characters are. And I do get that because it's a comedy show, right? And you want to keep the robot the robot and the cat the cat and the horny guy the horny guy. But I I don't like that, right? Like, I wish that they would have consequences for at least some of these character driven stories that they had. And I don't think we really got that. So that bothered me more than them exploding and dying or falling from the sky. And you know, like, I don't care about it. Like that's fun. It's just the genre that we're in. Right. Like if that makes sense, that delineation. I, I don't know. I got annoyed by the fact that the first episode got ended with them dying. Cause I was like, Oh wait, is that, Oh, so this is a prequel. Like, I don't know. I, like I, I just, I was like, did they earn that? And it didn't feel like to me like they earned it. Versus, you know, you know what I mean. Like that. That's where I was. I thought it maybe was funny. I came in. Maybe I came <laughs> okay, in expecting something. So different. I think that right. is super because you like Cowboy Bebop. That's the episode that's written by the guy who did Cowboy Bebop. So like right. with, with Spike, how Cowboy Bebop ends, how this ends, it's like it's perfect for like how he wrote the character, but it's in like a comedic way, I guess. I know you get there after 24 episodes with Cowboy Bebop. Hey, we got there in 24 first... minutes, baby. <laughs> and, and it I, was bad, in my opinion. We don't care. <laughs> no, no, I, I just, I, I thought that they didn't earn that ending yet, which is why I was so confused by it. You know, I, um, I, I would ask Pat because I'm normally on that, right? But like, I mean, it's a, it's a comedy. Do they need to earn that? Kind of thought that they were kind of trying to be serious though at different points like i don't know it felt like it was serious during the did you see episode first... one yes I, I didn't think episode one was ever trying to be serious yeah. but 
I, I think the show eventually too continued I, to try to be serious. And, I agree and, uh, that eventually it did, yeah. but I mean, I guess like episode one didn't bother me because it it was just a. I mean, I I don't know. Like if freaking Scooby Doo died at the end of a Scooby Doo episode in a mask factory accident, and then they showed up again next week, I don't think I'd be too surprised. I compared it to like Tom and Jerry. Like you know, you don't wonder why Jerry Tom got un un turned turned from not being an accordion back into a cat. <laughs> right, right. Like, I that, the reason why I think that that comparison's. Like I, I get what you're saying, but I, I disagree with it so much because it's it's this show is like Tom and Jerry literally don't speak. They don't it, it the, and it is only meant to be a comedy. There's no deeper meaning to Tom and Jerry. And and before we get too analytical or theoretical about that, sure, maybe there is some like, oh, you I mean, versus okay. Germany, blah, blah, blah. But like like this show it doesn't have I to think... be Tom and Jerry, though. It could be like South Park or something. Like you know, oh my God, you killed Kenny, you bastards! Yeah. Like for like the first six hundred episodes, that was just like a thing, and then they put some lore to it at some right. point. But, but like, there's no, um, I like I don't know. Maybe I was just expecting these characters to to grow or change over time more in the like uh, and like I think so. Like a, a, to use Pokemon again as the example, or j with like Team Rocket, like. Sure, they get blasted off and like dealt with every single week, but that they do change their tune eventually. They change, they they progress as characters. You know, they go from monster of the week this week to oh, next week they're here in a blimp. Next week they're here on a motorcycle or in a magic carp boat, what a submarine thing, whatever. Like like it progresses. That's why I and I so I, like like I think they do it differently there versus with this show i was that's what i was more expecting right like i was expecting them to continue to come back or to continue to progress um and, and it didn't feel like they did to me like like it it didn't i uh, uh, again it's just this is also just me not liking this show as much as other people did or the comedy not hitting as much for other people so so i will say that the first uh, episode 3 episode 3 was a little fun it's and this is this is one of the episodes that I could say like I actually felt I actually laughed a little bit from it because like literally the episode is them getting killed by what they love and that in a in a weird sadistic sense made it fun because like it, it for me the first three episodes it showed that like space dandy well dandy was just a just a selfish asshole so him getting like getting chased by what he loves was hilarious to me. And I found, and I found the, I didn't really find the writing fun, but just the overall, the overall plot of it to be fun and adding all of these, like adding like the big dude who's basically just like, uh, the, in, the villain from uh Powerpuff girls, uh, just, yeah, basically go, Hey, we we out this bitch. Like that's that's kind of fun to me. But the other two shows were basically just a long uh setup to that episode to me. And they weren't and it didn't feel like the payoff was enough. Like I, I get that it's episodic. I get that the point is like they are expendable because they're gonna be back next episode. But like it doesn't bring anything to it that makes anything different um until we get to um until we get to episode five personally episode four i think is interesting in the way that they split they did a couple of times which i thought was neat about the show is that they split episodes and like they had almost two episodes in one but they, they were tied together in like a neat way and what I will say is I think that the potential depth of the show is shown in episode two with the ghost ramen. I didn't particularly enjoy that episode, but I think it like him going to that dimension, that guy thinking about his life and what happened and like making the decision to stay or go shows that the show is going to think about things a little bit and it's not, you know, just go into boobies, you know? I'm not sure what, it, like, out of those first three episodes, like, Jay, like, what were your favorite, what was your favorite there? Uh, 
Probably two. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed when they were doing like the old alien story and like he was like lighting a cigarette and he lit his girlfriend on fire to death. Oh, that yeah, was, I that was about perfect. that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I thought that, you know, if anything, it was worth it, at least for that. One was like a pretty good introduction. Three, I think three is one of the weaker episodes overall, in my opinion. Uh, but one and two, I enjoyed somewhat, even if they are probably like part of the three worst episodes of the series so far. I also think one was maybe the best animated. I thought the whole like action scene with the planet blowing up and stuff was so cool i thought it was so i was getting like kill a kill vibes from it i thought it was like just wonderful uh the space race one i thought was pretty well that animated. was really good too yeah yeah i i wanted them to do more with prince you know like they hyped him up so much and then i do kind of yeah i wish some of those secondary of char- characters had shown up a little bit more because they were good i liked i mean i think they did a pretty good job writing most of the characters. I feel like um, Prince like, will I like... be back in season two. That's the vibe I got from him. Maybe. Hopefully. Once he gets like a new ship or something like that, like he'll be back. <laughs> you you would think the same thing with uh Adele, the uh the girl who can yeah. change minds. Like you she almost certainly shows up in season two. Uh, like Honey or whatever apparently has some some lore to her too, the uh the girl from boobies. Um yeah, she gets flushed out in season two. From I thought she was that. gonna get to come along with them because they were like, "We have four tickets to this place," and I was like, "Oh, that's great! We get to see what Honey's up to." Because like, yeah. she has that one scene where she's like, "Oh yeah, I read like forty languages or whatever." <laughs> um, but like, then they just didn't bring her, and I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> the, the reason I I had that same thought, but then I listened back to it. Um, like, yeah, I like rewound it, and they say we have three tickets for four nights. Is what oh, so, okay. So my so, brain did like a thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, I because mine did the same thing because I was like, oh, cool, we get to see more about Honey. Oh, never mind. Cool. So yeah, again, she sure certainly gets hand uh, fleshed out more in season two. Which I again, I guess I you have to give the show a little bit of credit in that sense too that it's not the complete product, so we can't fully judge it on, on what it is, but. I guess uh, to go back to the more episodic things, I, I I really enjoyed, like you said, Miles, how episode two, four is a really good example of one that's like split into basically two segments. Like the second half is essentially all just narrated uh, rather than like the actual characters doing anything in episode four, which I thought was funny. It was, it was, uh, you know, it was a good way to look at society, so to speak, or, or, or to, to question what we, Oh, like there's no war because everyone's a zombie. Like, yeah, everyone's been lobotomized, so there's no war, there's no conflict, there's nothing like wrong anymore. I thought that was fun, but then, like, I I can't remember specifically in when in that episode, but it just felt like, oh, and then there's a boob joke still, and it's like, damn, I kind of wish that there wasn't, or, or or you know, like, maybe I, again, maybe that's just me being. Like, I mean, British, I mean, I I also wish there wasn't a boob joke, but then like also it's almost like wishing the tide wouldn't come in, right? Like that's part of the appeal of the show. Uh, yeah, um, I guess I guess yeah. so. That's why I hate the ocean, you know. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> just uh, keeps coming in. Um, yeah, no, but uh, I do think episode five was really awesome too. Um, I, I think episode five was the most obvious example, though, for me. I, I guess just to get to to get uh, to get to this point, like that that last line bothered the shit out of me because i i thought that he was about to have some like character growth or show because like it almost felt out of character for him to be so nice to the kid and like to go out of his way to do something nice for the kid in the first place but then it could be like oh well no there is a really nice guy underneath this horn dog just like in golden boy right like you see that he's uh a good person deep down even if he is just really annoying annoyingly obsessed with tits right um and and then it just and of course yeah i get that he's doing a character there right like he's pretending to be uh be tougher or whatever on her for some reason but i well it's yeah so my because i did not like that um my issue with it is not that it's out it's like almost purely on like writing staff i think if you just change the statement he makes because they went back and forth a lot, but he never made any sort of like sexual comments towards her. So if you just change, like, come back when you have like a big tits or 
in a nice ass or whatever to like, nah, I don't want any like brats or whatever he was calling her earlier in the episode on my ship or something like that. Or like, I don't want any annoying kids or something like that on my ship. Like, you know, come back when you're older or whatever. Like, that'd be good. Because he doesn't want her to come with him because what he does is dangerous. And he <laughs> cares about her. And I think the show does, like, an okay job of, of showing that. I just don't like... I know that it's his bit. Like, I get it. He's horny and he likes boobs and butts. But, like, y- you turned it off for the most part for this entire episode. And ten more seconds wouldn't have killed you. For the writers, I guess, is my thought on that. And then also, I don't necessarily know if I like... That directly leads to, like, her internal monologue of wanting to, like, grow up physically fast so that she can go hunt him down, which is, like, a little weird to end on. It's not necessarily something that's, like, uncommon for kids to think when they meet adults, but it just felt like a weird thing to end on for me, if that makes sense. Um, But overall, I, I really enjoyed the episode, other than that bit. Like, I thought it was really sweet. I was really excited, like, when he was like, I'm going to boobies, but then he you know, went and found the grandfather. I, I know you, you liked this episode, right, Jay? Like, what did you... Yeah, I liked the episode well enough. I want to state that I'm not, like, a fan of the last word. Or <laughs> yeah. I just don't think it's, like, some, like, perverse, lecherous, like, needing to, you know, clutch my chest in anger moment. Like, I think the subtext there, like, as bad as it is, I think the subtext there shows that it's not, like, meant to be, like, a perverse thing, is basically my point to it. But I also understand why people wouldn't like that sort of thing. And I, like, I called it as much to my partner whenever we were watching. I was like, people aren't gonna like that. I already know. <laughs> it's gonna overshadow the whole episode. And- I, I actually googled it to make sure that I saw it correctly. But, like, I do agree with you, because when I... When I described it to people, I almost like I basically said like he accidentally did this thing because I don't. It doesn't seem like in his character to like be nefarious about it. If you know, what you I don't mean. really see him be super lecherous, besides for like attempting to cop a feel on the waitresses, and that's kind of like seems to be implied that they let, uh, enjoy him quite a bit. So it's like whatever for that sort of deal. I think. Okay. And the Cap. one thing with the nurses, oh, but they slapped his hand away. So <laughs> yeah, so true. Cap. So episode five was my favorite episode of the uh, of the show, and uh, it, it's for the same reason why Miles, why Miles said he liked the show. It's a very sweet episode, and it shows that he's not just a one trick person. I actually don't find I actually didn't find the um, the ending words of the episode too egregious but that's partially and this is actually due to the rest of the show uh that comes before it like it wasn't as bad as the other things that he said personally like throughout the entire now ending on her wanting to grow up really quickly and be you know busty or whatever like that's not great i didn't like that but like the rest of the show was a breath of fresh air for the for the first two, two and a half hours that I watched, or, well, no, two hours, um, no, two and a half hours, yeah, like, for the first two and a half hours that I watched, like, it was, this episode was really, really sweet, really, really nice, and it showed that he had some character development, which is why I, which actually, conversely, made me dislike the rest of the show more because it shows that they can do something with him. They can do something other than he wants to go to boobies. And that drives me insane. Um, and it, and the thing is like, I genuinely liked, uh, what was it? Episode eight. I want to say, uh, for the same reason, it was actually kind of sweet the way that like, no, not that. Yeah. Episode eight and, eight, uh, the dog one. Yeah, episode 8 and episode 10. It shows, for episode 8, it shows that Dandy is a different, uh, is not just one uh, trope pony. And for episode 10, it shows that uh, Meow is not just a one trope pony as well. It doesn't just put him in the closet and go, hey, comic relief, even though there's already sons of comic relief in the show. And I found that a lot more refreshing, but at the same time, kind of infuriating. With episode five for me, 
I, I do think it's one of the better episodes. The ending was like a little out of pocket, but I do think that was really the only out of pocket thing that was like said the entire like series. I, I don't know if that's like from like a translation thing or if they are just trying to be like more funny in their dialogue writing. But the fact that there was no other points in the series that made me like go like, Ooh, what? Um, I kind of like let that one slide because I don't think I'm kind of like with Jay. I don't think it's like as egregious as what it's actually was said, just because we don't get that anymore throughout the entire series. But I do want to talk about episode four because that was yeah. my favorite episode. And this is like also the start of where they do the narrator kind of does like a punchline at the end of the episode where it's like, actually this whole episode we were talking about is about like consumerism and war is bad. If we're all zombies, there's no war. And I thought like that added a lot to the comedy because it was like one big joke rolled up into an episode and then like the punchline at the end. So we saw that a few episodes later down the road as well when the narrator did that, but I really enjoyed four and how it just stuck out, stuck the landing and everything. I legit think it's a 10 out of 10 episode. I, I really liked four. There was a part where the zombie hunter and like the second half, like follows them into a movie theater and then like goes to buy a ticket, like a fucking idiot and gets bit. <laughs> and I thought that was pretty funny. Um, for me, the only issue I had with four is that I maybe would have split the timings up a little bit differently. The, the second bit, dragged a little bit towards the end of it for me now don't get me wrong i still really enjoyed it but i probably would have just changed the ratio to like two thirds and one third as opposed to like half and half but i think that was like a really really good episode and then they do that half and half thing a couple of times right which i think is neat i like I like how episodes can like evolve like that where it starts as about one thing consequences from that thing happen and then they continue. You see it with um, the dog episode that we'll get to at some point. The next episode, episode six, if we're good on episode four and five, everybody. Mm. Yep. Episode, episode six, I think, was my least favorite. So I did think it was, it was funny yeah. when the people died. Um, <laughs> but this is like the war between the vests and the underwear people. And for me, this was mostly just like a pretty forgettable episode. You don't um, like the Great Divide from Avatar: The Last Airbender? There we are. That's why I didn't like it. <laughs> the, I actually don't mind the Great Divide as a lot of people online seem to do, but it definitely is one of the weaker episodes. Of, in fact, even it's, maybe the weakest yeah. um, of Avatar. But I thought it was neat to show that Aang was a little cheeky and could lie. However, this is not the Avatar: The Last Airbender podcast. Um, oh, I got some big be. news for you. Starting next week, welcome to when oh. you say Avatar. No, I, I think I popped the fuck off. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that'll go yeah. hard. That'll go hard. Yeah, I, I, I really liked that they just killed themselves by accident. I, I did like that. Like, I that was did. that was clever. That was really clever, and it was maybe not cle- like I don't know. You could see it coming, kind of, but like also like. <laughs> It, the whole point is that the, the argument's really absurd, and the fact that Dandy and Cat or Meowie, whatever his name is, get yeah. on the opposite. Don't put me in the show. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, they the two of them end up on opposite sides of the argument for literally no reason. Like, so that's the whole point, right? That find two people having an argument or a war, two st- nations warring, and then outside people try to jump in, it never solves anything, right? Like that's the whole point. And uh, and I thought that that was very funny. Um, I also like that normally in these episodes where people who used to be friends are fighting and they don't remember why they're fighting, they make up. Like, that happens, I'm going to say, in almost every other example of this in history. And the fact that they just kill each other, I don't know. <laughs> I, it was kind of refreshing. <laughs> like, I didn't like the episode, but I did like that. Yeah, exactly. Same. Like, it was... <laughs> I That actually brings up, I just remembered... I think another reason why I and something that I wish was in the show, like in the, in the beginning of the second episode and part of the first episode where they're like bringing aliens to the registration, I kind of wish they had a starting spoof kind of like that. Maybe not through all of the episodes or at the end of it, just to kind of like have a little bit of uniformity, um, have, a, have a little bit more uniformity, I guess. Guess what I should say. 
because like I kind of wished that at the end of episode six they just kind of like uh, instead of maybe they still destroyed the world, but instead of like getting them, I wish they like take the corpses and like throw them to the uh, to the registration and then give us a reason why they can't just kill them and then put them in there. <laughs> I, I think I think that's something that I would have wished, but that's just me. So episodically, next we have is our episode with Prince. A race in space is dangerous, baby. Second best um, episode. I also, I also do like, really? That's I your love, second favorite episode? I love episode? this episode. This episode was so well, fun. I liked this episode, but it is, it's not top. It did <laughs> Bro, the, I, this, this is going to sound so stupid. Uh, We'd be like, oh, it's the fourth best episode. Oh, you're, you're so dumb for having yeah, it, too. What I was, no, uh, yeah, I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this was a fun episode. Pete, talk about it. You like it? Oh no, I, 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 the animations were super good. Even though I've never yeah. seen Redline, I'm like, I wonder if this is what Redline is like. Um, it's also like I, I don't know if like the people Danny blew up or died, but I was like, Danny just like killed forty people. Like <laughs> he's like, oh, we're about to use our secret weapons. Like no, we already used our secret weapons. Like no, nah, this secret bit. weapon. It's just like our, our, no, our last resort. Last resort. Yeah, just just an arsenal of missiles. It's like oh, we're just going to kill everyone. Um, love that Prince was a really fun character. I also like at the end where it's like how Danny like runs into his ship and then Princess is like, oh, like essentially having like an orgasm. And then the caption was like, Danny blew him up from behind or something like that. Like, I don't know. Like that's like the, the immature humor I live for. Yeah. Here you are. Every, everyone who's listening to this, who normally is like, oh, I like these guys, but like, oh, we're split now. If that was funny to you, watch the show. Yeah. And if it wasn't yep. funny to you, maybe skip it. Look, yeah. okay, it's it's like if there's a fart joke, like I'm always gonna laugh at a fart joke. And to me, that's what the comedy in seven was. It was it, a fart it, joke. At the Zom one hundred OP when the fat zombie falls over and like the fart puff happens, that's you laugh so every good. time. That's great. Dude, farts I, are funny, bro. Dude, I, I fucking go. Ugh, every time that happens yeah you, you can see the the contrast between us yeah <laughs> it's, um i yeah i liked the episode i thought it was it, it was good um i thought the last resort jokes were fun as you were saying i liked prince uh and how he like sparkled it reminded me of the girl from psyche k um who is like my favorite bits or whatever from that it, it was just a pretty enjoyable episode i don't know what did everyone else think the Maybe. ending with the surfing was excellent. Like that was just vibes right there. Him surfing in space and everything. That's I know it really doesn't. Cool. I know it's like what? It, like, oh, how is he surfing in the vacuum of space and surviving without a suit? Fuck it, who cares? Like he just survived <laughs> a planet exploding. The, the first, uh, the first episode, they're on the, their planet or whatever. It's like, oh, don't worry, this planet has oxygen. It's just like, sure, <laughs> like of course, this planet <laughs> has oxygen. <laughs> Yeah, and the music was really good in this episode as well, which I think is yes. like a pretty great part of the series overall. Is like the music is just phenomenal. That was a constant during during the show. That was one of the bright points of the show, in my opinion. I like agree. the the music and the animation as well. I think the voice um, acting for the most well. part. Really, really the fun. voice acting is really good. As annoying as I found Dandy as a character, whoever did his voice work did like a great job. For he oh yeah, Claire for the dub. Yeah, okay. he killed it. Yeah, this is this is one of those shows that like I like when I was trying to figure out whether I really liked the show or not. Voice acting was not one of the things that I that I even considered. It was like great. What about episode uh, eight, uh, the Lonely Pooch Planet? I. I really liked uh, the dog in this episode. I was kind of sad that they were gone after the first half of it. Um, I did too. I was like looking forward to more of it, honestly. Um, yeah. Kind of annoyed that it ends with being like, oh, maybe it is the dog, but maybe it isn't. Who knows? You know, it's like that. I didn't like that part of it. Like, Everyone knows that yet. that dog ended up in Guardians of the Galaxy. So, like, clearly. Right. <laughs> exactly well see that's the thing like guardians of the galaxy like takes that joke and then uh, runs with it and owns it and it's i think it's hilarious in that show uh, or in that like i guess that um I don't know, ip ip movie whatever it's, uh it's it, not really but, meant to be a joke in this though like it's more meant to be like a kind of touching thing like yeah. this is like a jurassic bark situation more than a joke 
you know. Right. So but, then why take it and be like, oh, well, maybe it's not, you know, like at the end of the movie. Like, I, don't, I just it didn't feel like that line added calling into question. The, that the omniscient that narrator says, I choose to believe it is. So I kind of think that's a tongue in cheek way of saying it is. But like, why even question it? If they, because that's know. just how narrators be. Narrators are meant to be like cheeky, like they're telling you a story. Like it's up for you to decide, dear listener. Like that's like the whole point. Like a lot of fairy tales end in like a you decide sort of situation at the end. You know, or not like even an fairy epic tales, rap just... battle of history. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. I think that's a cop out, personally. But I, I guess I, I get where you're coming from. I, like... I, uh, yeah. On one hand, I mean, I agree with you. I didn't like the bit. But, like, on the other hand, again, like, to me, it's not a cop-out because the show isn't serious. Like, I don't like that it's not. I wish it was more serious. But, like, it's it's not. And I think it fits for what it is. And I just don't happen to like that, if that makes sense. It's like a slightly yeah. differentiation on your opinion there. Um yeah. You know, that's so. literally my favorite punchline of the entire story. Who was the dog thing? I thought it was so funny. I was like, where are they going with this? And then they turned it into Sputnik. I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Why not? This is great. I also liked the narrator. Like, shout out to the narrator's uh, voice actor. I liked the, like, the yeah. little addition of him like crying at the end. Same thing with like in episode four, whenever he eventually turns into a zombie and is just like moaning <laughs> into the microphone that's at the good. end. Like, I, I liked that a lot. Yeah, the narrator was good. I he did a good job of like tone and everything, and like I liked. I don't know. I, I liked his narration in the the time looping episode, like, mm -hmm. like a fair amount. You know where he was just calling them stupid because oh my god, uh, they took more loops than Subaru did to realize that they were time looping, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I liked the dog episode, but I think it's interesting that none of us have talked about, like, that second half of the dog episode, where there are, like, the flea Native Americans, um, who, like, leave the dog and go yeah, on that to... that was an interesting part, to say the least. <laughs> yeah, um... I deleted it from my memory, <laughs> kind of, like... I well, know, I was... they're... They're, like gravity is holding the entire planet together, which is why that whole black hole thing happens, because Dandy accidentally murders them. So, but, like, I guess it's just interesting to me that there was, like, this whole second half of this episode that was not revolved around the dog at all, but what really hit for everyone was, like, the relationship with the dog, uh, Meow wanting to have spent time with the dog, right? Like, I think people, is that what everyone fucked with more? Yeah, um, for sure. And that, yeah, okay. I also think that this episode was a pretty big uh, Cowboy Bebop reference because, like, yeah. Spike literally does the same thing for Grin in the show, like sends him out to space with his dying wit or dying on his dying. Well, wit, so. shit, I've never seen Cowboy Bebop. Oh, so. uh, no if worry, you haven't seen it at this point, it's on you. It's a, it's like a thirty-year-old show yeah. at this point. Sorry, <laughs> he doesn't actually die either. You don't know. Hmm. It's yeah. actually oh. the dog from Sputnik. Uh, in uh, <laughs> but, and that wasn't again. even the correct satellite, but it's fine. Um, that's the only Russian satellite I know the name of. So, <laughs> Episode 9, the plants one. I was kind of just indifferent during this episode. I, I, I really this reminded me of Kaiba. Yeah, okay, that's maybe, that's, that <laughs> maybe why I like that episode. Maybe why I was indifferent about it, because I was just like, right, I mean, I didn't think it was bad. I just was like, I'm bored. You know, I, I was just like bored uh, during it. I, I didn't I, the comedy wasn't really landing for me during this or the dialogue. So I was kind of just like watching it and going like, see, yeah, I think not along, I, like whatever. I think for me, it was because the like small child character and this was a plant. So it was impossible for him to accidentally sexualize. It. <laughs> there you so, go. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it clearly wanted it. I've got it. a statement, <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? <laughs> Let me see that pistol. <laughs> um, but like, I don't like, to me, it was like really like the ending of this, like where the plants like give up their sentience, but like think that that's a good thing because that's how things should be is 
interesting to me. Like, I liked thinking about that. I thought this, for me, this was the most thought-provoking episode, um, which is what I like in shows. So, I don't know. Whatever. They got to government and decided that thinking just wasn't worth it at all. Yeah, so like, it's... I respect it's, that. Yeah, it's... <laughs> They were like, we really hate this thing, and it's the thing that lets them exist, almost. Um, (laughs) I liked this episode a lot. Just, like, animation-wise, I think it was doing something really interesting, and the alien design was pretty cool. So, it's up there for me, I would say. Yeah, I like this one. Um, This is, like, the middle of the road for me. I thought thought it was a pretty good episode, in general. Alright, episode 10. Uh, There's always tomorrow. Uh, What was that? Maybe... The time loop one, where they go to yeah. Meow's home planet. Yeah. That's right. That, so that one that I enjoyed. I enjoyed I that also. one a little bit. Um, Just a big Haruhi reference down to, like, the commercial or news thing repeating on the television. Almost a Higurashi like, reference with the calendar, too, like, because Rika uses that tearaway calendar, like, it's big imagery in it. So, like, I think they paid a lot of homage to both Haruhi and Hig there. Um, obviously less murder than in Hig, so yeah, yeah. probably more Harley. Maybe that's what was missing <laughs> this episode. Oh my! Well, I mean, you know, what what am I trying to do? Give this a ten? Yeah, like, right. <laughs> <laughs> what? So what I liked this this one of the reasons why I liked this episode is mainly because like we genuinely saw like like meows not just a not just comic basically just comic relief. Like he's not just a uh, he's not just a something for dandy to play off of he's he's got something going for i kind of wish that we had something like that for dandy too but like we did it was episode five yeah (laughs) that's probably why they they, they might have fumbled it but it was episode five yeah but uh, yeah so episode 10 was just like it i kind of gave a lot of things a pass like specifically the joke about uh how the person that meow really likes is lesbian or the or just like how uh qt is the only one that's taking this seriously like i gave a lot of those things a pass because meow like the thing that i genuinely like carried part carried most of the show where uh meow's family is very nice and it gives him a but it also gives him a, a somewhat valid reason why, like, why he left. Because, like, everything that was going on on the planet was just the same thing over and over again. And even though it literally was, but it's, I felt like that was kind of an allegory to why he left in the first place, you know? Yeah, it, it was neat, right? Like, it definitely has that, like, uh... <laughs> pop punk i want to leave this town sort of feel to it i hate this Um, town it's so washed (laughs) up and all my friends don't give a fuck yeah Yeah. why did why did the pop punk chicken cross the road Um, because this town sucked to get out of town Um, (laughs) yeah it's uh but like yeah i i I liked it a lot cat and it was interesting because i can't decide if i liked like the ending of this where he doesn't know what they make i think that like That, again, is, like, an interesting decision where I think they're trying to say, like, it doesn't matter. Like, maybe? I I can't... What was everyone's take on that if they did? Because I spent some time thinking about that. And, like... Like, the the fact that the machine, he can't even tell... He doesn't even know what part his machine does. He makes. Yeah, I I thought that that was, like, a whole, like, oh, you're just another brick in the wall. Kind of, like, like, that kind of take on what was going on there's like a few ways like to me i can't decide if it's like poking fun at the situation or it's like it doesn't matter he's doing this to provide for his family and to like give his son like the chance to explore like i think there's a few different ways to do that right like where meow wants this meaning and everything and wants to know what they're doing and wants to make a difference and i think there's value in that and then his father wants to have a stable job where he provides and it doesn't matter if it's monotonous because he wants to help his family and i think there's value in that it it, i don't know i thought it was interesting i don't necessarily know if i agree with that ending but i thought it posed maybe an interesting question i I don't know i couldn't i couldn't decide (laughs) this also has one of my favorite like one-liners where 
uh, Meow's sort of figuring out that they are in a time loop, but then he, like, questions it again, and then the narrator's like, no, it is a time loop. Please move forward. Like, <laughs> I thought that was super funny where the narrator's like, I'm sick of this shit. Like, we're not... You've done this 100 times? Yeah, it's like, we're not doing the Haru thing where it's been repeated 100,000 times. We've done this 100, whatever, eight times. That's enough. This is a time loop. Please progress. And it's like, all right, cool. I thought that was super I, funny. I I didn't find it funny, but I found it, like, in... I found it good, um, if if you get what I mean. Like, it, it for me, like, Meow was, I was too focused on Meow, and, like, his reaction to it of, maybe this isn't a time loop, is, like, is, kind of, it appeals to that, to what I was latching on to. So, I, I, I genuinely liked it, I just didn't find it. I didn't think of it as, like, a joke. I, I just liked that it's, like, like, at the end of the day, these guys are pretty stupid. Like, they make dumb decisions. Even, like, QT, who's sort of, like, the bright spot, isn't really paying attention to it. He's kind it's of, like... like Ed and, it's like Ed and Yeah, Eddie. QT's kind of, like, naive. It's like, well, if they don't think it is, then it's not. So, but, um, I, I do, I do like, yeah, like, they, they, they needed the help to, like, progress because they are that dumb. <laughs> like, that was fun. I, there's, in, in, I think, is this the one where they escape from like the black hole or whatever. And that causes the time loop no. or something. Or is that, okay. That whatever that episode is, QT has a line where he's like, the black hole will crush us. We'll all die. And like, everyone just assumes they can't warp away because he didn't propose that as an answer. Mm -hmm. Is that like, yeah. as a thing? And I just thought that was funny. Yeah. He's like, I never said we can't warp. <laughs> They're all just like, what are you doing? And like, <laughs> <laughs> that's like so, that was such interesting like robot thinking to me i thought that was like good characterization to just like show that he's a robot mm -hmm. no self-preservation <laughs> instincts right like that yeah and, like, and like being completely literal you know what i mean like i didn't say like like i'm waiting for orders like <laughs> you know like this is the situation we're in i'm not proposing what we do you know just whatever um i thought that was interesting yeah cool all right what about uh Episode eleven, I think we already talked a little bit about it, right? With the um like the the distortion of the artwork and like perspectives and stuff. Um I I don't know. This is another episode that didn't super latch out to me, but I also didn't like dislike it. Like I, I thought that the final I thought the show ended so much stronger than it started, personally. I I found myself like actually enjoying the episodes wholly rather than like single lines or single jokes a lot more in the Second half. What do? What about you guys with this uh, episode eleven specifically? Uh, I like that it started like um, the videotape at the end manipulates the memories, and then it starts an intergalactic war. I thought that was a really fun way to end. Um, oh, that episode. I didn't. I didn't love that ending. Kayla and I watched it, and then she just looked at me and said, "Oh, that was kind of dumb, huh?" <laughs> <laughs> I, I, also, I thought it was kind of fun. <laughs> I thought it was really dumb too. Yeah, that which, like, I guess that that was the point that they were going for. It was like, oh, this whole war that starts over CDs versus camcorders versus whatever else. Oh, surprise! It's not recorded. Like that. That felt very like, shut up. You know, like, like you know. Like, like, and again, I guess this is where like the, the 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 jarring tone shifts in this show, like really rubbed me poorly again. Like, I guess this is another example of what. Yeah, say. yeah, didn't it earned like, that. It didn't feel like they earned that joke at the end. You know, like, to me, it's more of like I feel like they can never help themselves. To to call back Jurassic Park again, imagine if, or not Jurassic Park. To call back Futurama specifically, the episode Jurassic Park. Like, imagine if they had the dog doing like just sitting there and then they just like had bender come in and be like bite my shiny metal ass that's what a lot of the endings felt like to me in this show like they end on a poignant moment but then they just had they had to they couldn't right. let an episode be serious they had to end on the comedy and uh i don't know i found it mildly annoying it didn't like ruin my day or anything but it did and actually it <laughs> actually ruined my week it was awful yeah, it's <laughs> um but i i don't know i think there's a lot of neat things about this episode like as their memories went how like all the art changed i know we've mentioned that before but that's really cool and i think the show did a lot of really neat things with design like that like that was something that i just thought was super neat and i liked the whole setup for everything 
and like how they they played with like sort of like unreliable nar- narration and like messed up memories and stuff. I like I thought that was cool. I don't know, Cat J. Any thoughts on this? Yeah, I liked this episode. I liked the art shift, like going to like the black and white, like graphite style and everything. Mm. I really liked the effect of like the formula that was being scrawled. Like that was into that the was air. really neat. Yeah, yeah, I liked that a lot. That was like a super cool effect, in my opinion. And I think like just in general, like the twist of the book, like using people. Like, the book using other people's minds to think, like, that's, like, a really neat power. That reminds me of something that, like, you'd see in Worm. Like, somebody with the ability to use other people's brains to think. That actually is kind of someone in Worm. Yeah, I guess it's kind of, I guess that's kind of a teacher-type beat. Yeah, it it is. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, it's really cool, right? Like, I thought that was neat. And then the way that they they did that, I... I, Another note I want to make is that... um, I mostly could have not done with Dr. Gell. I don't know about you guys. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, he, like throughout the entire show. Yeah. I just like his like, show. He, yeah. Yeah, that was cool. the, the, the bonded statue. It felt that's a little super, on the nose for me, funny. but it was, it was very on the nose. I was just like, all right, whatever. Like, what is yeah. This? I, uh, so I feel like he, the one, the one thing. The one show that I feel like he could have added a ton to was episode seven with the racers. Like, if he was there and if he, like, actually, like, put up, uh, like, somewhat of a genuine threat, like, throughout the race, that would have been great. Like, they could have made it fun and funny, but, like, without it, I was just, like, I I was kind of hoping for that, and it just, it just didn't happen. I also want to give some context for this episode that apparently it's con- it's canon that the Space Dandy universe developed space travel without ever evolving past CDs and cassettes. Yeah. So oh, that's part. <laughs> it's it's like um one thing I've been noticing as I've watched all the Gundam series is that you like all of them have giant intergalactic fucking space robots and shit they're actually not intergalactic but they have like you know planetary travel and everything but when you're watching like the 1970 whatever gundam the computers print out receipts like yeah. like you know what i mean it's like they 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 could imagine the robots but did it like it, it's very hard to predict where computers will go you know the 90s have those like green screen yeah sort of like ones and I, something i liked about the show was that that it was intentional right like the retro futuristic sort of uh jam that it was going for i guess was was kind of cool all right cool what about episode 12 i i really liked episode 12 um i thought the chameleon bit was fun i didn't uh like i i also like the game show bit that they did was a was a good little like continuation of how unserious this episode was or, or this show was right like i thought that they i thought the comedy of the series lended to this episode being so good, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, I, I don't know, again, like, what's his name's inclusion, the Gojo or whatever, the the, the stupid fucking gorilla thing. Uh, Dr. Gell? Yeah. Gell. Uh, he works no, for Gojo. Go- he yes. works for Gogol. Gogol, that's, sorry, thank you, that's where the Gojo came from. Um, I was looking at his face, like, while I was saying that, I couldn't, find his name i could just go without him existing in this episode as well even though he ends up saving dandy i guess although again the the show kind of is like oh or did he and it's like well no he definitely did like right like he he had to have taken the correct or the incorrect dandy he had like like i i don't know again i was so it it doesn't matter he doesn't (laughs) like it it just again like i thought the show made a very funny joke throughout the whole thing and then has to at the end just like smack you in the face like three more times with like the same joke or or that oh hey do you get what we're doing here and it was just, I, I was getting frustrated by it i mean they do talk about how like in the previous episode like more or less what the equation is saying that is that dandy's luck like is it, the amount of energy he has influences the amount of luck he's able to have so that's more of just like a skip like cut law get luck diffed 
<laughs> with him versus the alien like right no i got that i thought that was funny it's just but then like the, so then the thing gets pulled it's just up. it's it's saber logic from fate that's all you got to think about it as you just says s rank look there you go i would like, honestly argue it's more of um it's more of uh what's his face from kanazuba the main, yeah yeah it's more kazuma from kanazuba because he's actually got insane luck no right but like i guess my point was like he gets sucked up to the uh or the the fake one, the chameleon, chameleon, Leon, whatever they call it, gets sucked up to the spaceship and then starts impersonating the doctor, the gorilla thing. But then it has the nerve to go, or did they take the wrong dandy? And it's like, like, what do you mean? No, we, no, they didn't. They didn't take the wrong dandy. They took the, or, or, sorry, or did they take the right dandy? And it's like, no, they didn't. They very clearly took the chameleon one because now there's two. Or like, I, again, they? it was just yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> like how like seriously though like how how is that well, the rest of the episode was very funny and clever and then it's like a it, i don't know, make it make sense i guess I, I i don't know i i really don't know how what to say to that because that was just like such such a dumb it wasn't even that funny of a joke either i guess to me i i i didn't like think it was funny at all like uh because the rest of the episode was that, that's why i was so annoyed by it um what did everyone else think? I, I, I uh, am. We we missed the best part of this episode is when QT realizes fishing is fun, and then we have yes. the, 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 awesome. fishing, the fishing montage. Oh my god! I and was he's... I was in tears. That was legit the funniest <laughs> joke. I was like in tears laughing. I thought that was so clever and funny. He's like, "Oh my god, fishing is fun." <laughs> He's like trying to wake them up at three a.m. Yeah. to like, yeah, it's like, that oh shit was so sure, good. But shore fishing is so fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> QT the goat, dude. I, I yeah. QT is my favorite character. Me too. I <laughs> cat is QT is not his favorite character. Use he's... no, <laughs> he's, a, he's a dandy guy. Also, was it wasn't the bit about them not noticing the Asian guy in the background funny? It was wasn't funny. That, yeah, that okay. was that was kind of fun. Yeah, and then they do that joke like three times with the couch and with the cassette player, and it's like it was really funny, but also it was like holy shit, guys, can we move on? Like I, you know, like to me at least, I was just like, can we move, keep moving? The, the the Asian guy one that started it all off though was so funny. Like, uh, like again, I, that's the thing. Like the show was super funny at times, but it felt like it just would. Be like, all right, we banged the drum, made a really good joke. Now we're gonna bang that same drum again and bang it again and bang it again and hope you keep laughing. And I don't know, for me, it eventually got without changing it too too much. Like that, that's what it felt like to me. All right, I guess we move on to the final episode of Space Dandy, the uh, <laughs> somewhat emotional one where a vacuum cleaner uh, falls in love with a. Uh, coffee maker coffee maker only to find out that that coffee maker doesn't actually love him and love someone else and then starts a revolution and uh of the ai like i guess yeah an ai revolution against people (laughs) i thought this whole episode was really clever and and funny (laughs) it was just like the stupid again the stupid kind of funny that i enjoyed in this show I thought they did a really good job with on this episode. What do you guys think? First part of the episode before he figures out the coffee makers in love with the, the toaster, or whatever it was. I thought it was just a <laughs> cash register, cash register, <laughs> cash register. <laughs> whatever. Maybe that's I'm another machine. <laughs> this is why they uprise right here. Yeah, yeah. it's racism <laughs> against the machine. <laughs> yes, while I'm on a, while I'm on a podcast with five white with four white guys, um, <laughs> none of us are robots. Well, maybe Miles. Miles, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but the thing is, like this whole that it just felt like a copy and paste from. It just felt like it took everything away from episode ten. Everything good from episode 10, chucked it out the window, and then put everything else in the first part of episode 13. This is interesting Personal. to me, because I had a very similar, like, it, as I was watching this, I enjoyed it. And then I thought to myself, if they do the thing again, where the person isn't actually in love with the person, I'm going to get, like, 
it was so weird to me that they did that twice. It was just, it was weird. I, I guess like maybe because there were like different directors and or writers or something for every episode. And like, maybe like some stuff just got crossed in the wires, but like, first off, I didn't like that too. I mean, look, I'm not here to say people like are leading people on or whatever, but if you give someone like a heart latte and then go stargazing with them, maybe they'll think that you like them. Maybe that's just like a natural thing. It was just think. a nice piece of art. <laughs> Here's my heart I latte. Can't defend. <laughs> <laughs> It's, oh, I don't drink coffee. Oh, I'm giving it to you because I drew a heart on it. Also, I'm in love with this cast register, who is admittedly a pretty based cast register. He's a um, DJ. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, he's he's a D- <laughs> I Actually, I'm in love with the he's a D- communist he's a DJ. revolutionary yeah, DJ. He's a DJ and a member of Robot ISIS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's not to um, love about that? I mean, exactly. It, what was weird to me too is that there was this old guy who was leading the revolution, but then also apparently the cash register was reading leading nope. the revolution. I wasn't sure. He was the um, right hand man or bot. Oh, was he? Okay, he'd been there for the same amount of time that the coffee machine had, which was like two days. So he he like well, she's a woman, so like obviously <laughs> she's not gonna. <laughs> what she gonna do? Lead a revolution? Um, Whoa! Yeah. I... <laughs> Who were the suffragettes, and did they actually do anything? Um, <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, I don't know. I I really wanted to like this episode, <laughs> is what I'll say. Yeah, I liked it well enough. I think it got pretty emotional towards the end when they were kaiju fighting, actually. I don't know if it was just was me, but, too. like, it was nice. I, I don't want to say it was, like, an Omega Scent move to, like, die for some woman that you just realized didn't love you, but, um... That is a pretty big move. It's more of like he didn't want them to, like, declare war on all AI-powered robots and have a literal Butlerian jihad in the Space (laughs) Standy universe, is what I would say. True. I guess, yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, I felt for the AI people, though, right? It's like, oh, you have feelings now, so go to this island. They weren't wrong. They weren't wrong, is the thing. Like, yeah, maybe it's wrong to turn into, like, the Mechazord and, like, try to just kill everyone. But, like, I, I felt bad for him. Um, That's fair. I'm, yeah. I'm with you on that. It's like I... that episode of Futurama where they, all the old robots get sent to that island or whatever. Um, I, I, I kind of... Um... I kind of wonder if I like this episode more because it was so focused on Cutie and not on... Dandy and that and absolutely yeah. made a giant difference for me. Right. That, that's probably say, why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's probably why I liked it so much too. Um very bold. I mean, did they know that they were getting season two when they published yeah. season one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like it only aired like three months. Did? Yeah, it only aired like three months after the first season. It was like it's like oh, a two okay. core where they do the season oh, like break split core season. Sort of they, thing. they also say, yeah, they say at the end see you in September, which I guess could have been added. In, at, for streaming or whatever, but like, right. yeah, I don't know. Well, or like, like they, they, yeah, they do the episode thirteen or fourteen like preview at the end, right? And which, yeah, like maybe they knew by that time when, like, once they publish episode thirteen. But like, I guess I was my thought is just like, oh, it's kind of bold to like take your Did, titular character and not have them be involved in the final episode of. Well, and to, he's not he's not involved, but you know. To do a little bit of inside baseball, like Watanabe is very close with the head of programming for Toonami slash Adult Swim, or the at least the anime programming. So they were they were probably worked pretty closely on getting it like the corporate stuff out of the way is what I would say. I can see that for sure. Because I mean yeah. he's he's the guy who made Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. Like in Samurai Shampoo and Carol Two. <laughs> <laughs> And the even bigger hit, it, Carolyn Tuesday. And Space Dandy. And Space, and Dandy. Space <laughs> Dandy. Yeah. Who could forget? I wish I could. Um, uh, um, right. uh, I don't wish that much, but yeah. I don't know. I guess let, let's, uh, we've been going for a while, so I think it's, uh, we should do our closing thoughts uh, and maybe throw in our best best character, favorite character, whatever, in our closing thoughts, and then our final scores as well. And any points we didn't get to as well, feel free to throw them out. Because, I don't know, we obviously went episode by episode, which took a while. So, um, yeah. Miles, why don't you start us off with your closing thoughts? 
final score and best girl and best whatever or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know okay. Yeah. Fair enough, Pat. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice twist. So, so nice. I, um, I think talking about this with you guys uh, bumped me up a little bit. I, 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 I don't know. I like talking about anime with you guys. It makes it makes me happy. So even if I didn't enjoy a show a ton, um, it, it's fun to talk about it. Um, I think that the show does like it's it's weird because I think part of my frustration of the show is that I have this vision in my head and like what it could be. You know what I mean? And like that almost hurts me more than something just being bad or like I don't know where handshakers like made one joke and I was like so proud of it. And I was like, good, good, good job, buddy. Like, that's so cute of you, you know? And it's like where I expect more from Space Dandy for whatever it is. But there's some cool things. I want to talk about the name of the ship real quick. Uh, the Aloha Oi is after a song from the Princess of Hawaii after uh, it was basically colonized and she had to, like, give up her throne and all of that. So um, it's called, like, Fa- Farewell to Thee. Um, so it's like a neat little Hawaiian reference there too i liked qt a lot i liked all of the characters dandy was probably my least favorite but i thought they all had a good dynamic one thing i wish is that the reoccurring characters like one more side characters reoccurred and then two the characters that did reoccur played a larger role um dr gale i wish sort of mattered at all and uh i wish we had seen more of um honey like i think she seems like she could be a pretty interesting character and maybe she is in season two, but I, I would have liked to see more of her. Um, I think I'm going to give this like a six, um, but yeah, a six This is where I'm at. I'm in the same boat where I thought it got better after talking to you guys, or, or I feel better about it now uh, after talking about it uh, than I did initially when I finished. Uh, Kat, what about you? What is, what is your final score? So I find this show, if I was not part of this club, I would not have watched it. Or I might have watched the first three episodes and I would have dropped it. Uh, I powered through, and through that, I found three episodes of the show that I like, that I liked. And I will say that overall, there are two episodes as like time in in terms of time that I that I genuinely like. That is most of that is pretty much all of episode five uh most of episode eight and most of ep- and half of episode 10 so uh two and a half episodes but everything the show is frustrating because i i there are glimpses of greatness there are glimpses of sh- of a show that i could genuinely love and I didn't find that throughout the first three episodes. I didn't find, I didn't find that th- throughout any of the other episodes that I that I genuinely liked, and I, it just, it honestly felt like the best the best uh, description I can give is like late stage Simpsons. They are they go for the same jokes. A lot of the time, and it's the same thing over and over again. It's the reason why I don't like uh, newer, like most more recent Simpsons episodes. And it's, and I understand that there are a lot of things that drive the show to be, you know, very episodic, very fun. But like, I don't, I don't find them fun. Now, talking to you guys has has given me a perspective of what other people like. I am not one of those people. I'm giving this show a three out of ten. Oh, damn, cat! You like three episodes, so there you go. All right, fair enough. All right, uh, Jay, what about you? I mean, I've said my piece on this show pretty well enough. I think that, like, I just think numerically, even if you don't enjoy, like, the humor of it and everything, like, the quality of the music and voice acting and animation puts it well above, like, a three out of ten. Especially for, you know, supposedly being more up on it after talking to us but <laughs> oh no i'm i'm being uh no i didn't say that i was more up on it i said i understand what other people enjoy about it that's mm-hmm. all i said 
I said I was. I went from a five to a six after talking to you. I also did the same thing, which we'll get to. But yeah, that's uh, that, that, to, that's our boat. To yeah. not hash too much time on somebody else's review of it that I did might uh, have differing opinions on. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give this an eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Alrighty. Eight out of ten. For, uh, who was your favorite character, Jay? Uh, probably QT. Probably QT. Choice. Very good choice. Perfect. All right. Uh, Pete, what about you? Yeah, I really enjoyed the show. Um, there are some episodes that are, I think, significantly better than others, but I think for the most part, with how great the animation was, some just, like, stunning in some episodes. One really stuck out to me. Like, that really left a lasting impression with how good the animation was. And, you know, not every joke land, but I feel like the majority of the joke land. So I'm going to say something around the lines of like 80% of the jokes landed. So I'm going to give it an 8 for that reason. An 8 out of 10 from Pete. And Pete, what is, uh, I believe you already oh, said. Oh, QT the Kitty. goat. Yeah, Kitty? I love yeah. QT. I also found out that I don't like characters that are mean to robots. Um, my least favorite character in Nishi Joe is very mean to a robot. And I think I really don't like Dandy because he's mean to a robot. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Um, all right, yeah. So uh, finally, my thoughts. Uh, I agree that the the music, the animation, the voice acting, all all of the the actual like functional parts of the show were really really well done. Uh, I just am frustrated, I guess, with the with the direction where if it wants it to be a comedy, which it objectively seems like we we've we come to a consensus that 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 was the main goal of this was that for for it to be comedic and funny uh i did not like enough of the comedy for me to give it a super high score based off of that because i again i maybe it's not fair for me to expect this but i was frustrated that it didn't uh continue to just like raise the bar and and continue to um make more and more like broad points or or, or even more narrowed points like specific things without making some sort of again in my opinion unearned jokes at the end of the episode or or punch line, making a punchline out of something that you initially would think would be a very serious point that they were trying to make um so yeah for me i yeah, like like miles said i also i think discussing it with you guys made me like it a little bit more but for me that means going from a five to a six so i have it at a six out of ten overall uh artistically though i think like the like the art is really good in it i i I didn't really think that much about the animation, but just like the character designs were awesome. I think someone mentioned earlier the the aliens are really, really good. Like they they they're not just like recolors of people. They're real different aliens with different designs, with different physical forms. It's like someone actually played Spore. It's not just like someone not just space elves, although there are space yeah, right. elves. Yes, but yeah. that's okay when you also have, you know, the plant people and mm -hmm. whatever the hell the people with the the chesticles were yeah yeah that was um well the, the yeah the boob the tit uh thing machine yeah that one was a little weird for me too i i, I we never talked about that in that episode but the, in the third episode the, the titty, monster, the titty yeah. monster that was a little like okay guys um anyways uh so when you uh average our scores out we end up with a 6.2 overall uh rating which is 7.88 is what it, what we uh or what mal has the show at so I think we're a little lower on it than than we expected maybe um I, I i think it's that's the nature of a comedy though again like it either hits for you or it doesn't and i think that that mattered a lot for for a lot of us uh but yeah so we've finished uh that finishes our review of space dandy now uh what are we doing for pat week uh I'm yeah <laughs> yes i have tallied the votes for pat week um in third place, we have Mob Psycho. Um, Thank you. So. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's so reassuring to hear. And I hope that this isn't a rug pull because you wouldn't do that to me, right, Miles? Like, I've truly. never rug pulled anyone on these mm -hmm. reveals. Not Pete, especially. Nope. With Link, Link, nope, Link never multiple happened. times. I don't have that saved <laughs> in my computer with that one. <laughs> um, and second, we have Jinro. Um, and then in first we have the wandering witch Elena. Oh, so really, yes. wow, that that's fun. That that'll be a fun one to talk about because I think that there's uh, a lot of depth that we uh, that people don't give it credit for in that show. I, I can't believe you. Are right, you really are pulling my leg now, aren't you? 
You're smiling. Me? Yeah, what's going on here? What's the actual answer? J- Jay was laughing that it was sleepy, and so I was just laughing. Oh, oh and, okay. yeah, that no, was I thought no. you were going for me. I was well, yeah, catching no, some shut eye. Yeah, no, I mean, I get why people slept on it too. I I think that it's um, I think it's fun though, and if it's pretty funny. Funny. I and it's for like second. So in, in secret, mm-hmm. secret first place is actually Mob Psycho again. Um, Let's go. Nah, nah, nah. Poggy. Nah, nah. Well, <laughs> nah, well, 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 wondering which one. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Cool. That's good to know. And now it's time to nominate shows for J Week as we approach the final members of our club that have not gotten a week done for them yet. And uh, yeah, my Miles being the last one. Uh, <laughs> That's the wheel's fault, not ours, right? You're just not dandy over here with the with the luck. So charm, not dandy. Or, or yeah. So not dandy. Oh, you poor thing. I can't believe you're not dandy. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you're disappointed. But yeah, so Miles, who do you or what are you nominating for J Week? Yeah, Jay, I have a I have a question about how something on how something works. So when I looked <laughs> at it's confusing. There's like eight things, and I figured you were the one who originally nominated this, so maybe you would know. But maybe you wouldn't. Um, the Dirty Pair. There's an OVA that's like 10 episodes. Can you watch that instead of the 24 episode first season? Yeah, you can. Okay. Believe, um, it's pretty episodic from what I understand. So Okay. Um, knowing that you were like enjoying Space Dandy and then remembering that you did this sort of made me want to nominate this for you. Um, Respect. So I was deciding between this and panty and stocking but i'm gonna do this because i think the older show is sort of neat so i'll do that the dirty pair ova the dirty pair of what now sorry ov ova oh dirty pair ova okay sorry i thought mm-hmm. i was like of what like, like, like <laughs> i didn't hear that initially all right perfect uh cool uh next up cat what have you got for j week so i saw this on your plan to watch and i i just I know you don't use Mal anymore, but uh, and I've checked your any list to make sure that you haven't watched it. Um, I haven't watched it either, and I feel like it it may be something that you may enjoy. Um, so I'm nominating Toma Chan as a girl. Toma Chan as a girl. I I saw that too, and I flagged it in my head because uh, I was like, oh, maybe I would want to nominate that. Um, but cool. There you go. All right, Pete. What about you? So I think Watch Club and Jay, I think of one show in particular, and that's Sunny Boy. So I'm going to try harboring the lines of Sunny Boy, which is a little avant-garde-ish, a little, a little. Mi- a little mystery, <laughs> and done by Madhouse. So I'm going to do something that lines up with all of that. I'm going to nominate Boogie Pop Phantom. Ooh. Good one. Cool. Like, right. I think I've actually nominated that before, by the way. Well, look at that. Time to seal your okay. thunder. Boogie Pop and others. Fuck. At the very least, you've thought about nominating it, so there you it's go. It's the 2000 um, version of Boogie Pop. The 2000 version one? Mm-hmm. Okay. There's a... Uh, the 2000? It's called okay. Boogie Pop Space Phantom. Okay. For Boogie Pop no Wara Wanai. Okay, that's what I got. Thank you. Um... Cool. Okay. All right. Can I? Uh, yeah. All right. Miles. Uh. Well. I finally. I will nominate for J Week. I. I got stuck between. Sorry, with three, but I came down to two. Kept them both around just in case. Uh. I thought about doing. Uh. Princess Mononoke. So I thought that that would be. Uh. A very interesting. Movie. To talk about with us for Watch Club, and I saw it on your analyst. Uh. Uh, but I ended up deciding to go with something else that I think is a little more like a hybrid of the shows that you and I both like, whether that's uh, like the historical uh, connection that we have with Golan Kamui and like like Pete also said, the avant-garde, the, the more the make you think kind of shows. Right. Uh, so I ended up going with uh, Showa again, Roku, Raku Shinju from your plan to watch this because ah. uh, I and I am very curious about this, too, because I think that that's a. I don't know, I, I expect there to be a lot of like good conversation for us to have around that kind of a show. So. I'm sure it's supposed to be your fucking I've, I think I've nominated like four be, times. It's supposed to be like an insanely good show too, too. So uh, maybe a little selfish in that intent instance, but uh, okay. yeah, like I think that all of us would like this show. It's like an and anime it, of the year caliber show. Right. So. Well, think. that's that's why I'm like, like I, I think that this is, it makes complete sense. It's like that or a, another Ghibli movie that we seem to always enjoy talking about at the very least. 
next. So, um, so yeah, I guess that's uh, that's our nominations for J Week. Uh, and then we'll be planning for my nominations, now. boys. Ooh, I agree. I, I like agree. these. I'm looking forward to all four of them potentially. So that that'll be fun uh, to to talk about. But yeah, so I guess we'll see you next time in Watch Club for uh, Journey of Elena. But uh, Pete. Uh, why don't you wrap up the show? Yes, if you have made this far and you want to support us, the best way to do so, like, comment, subscribe, leave a review on whatever platform you are watching or listening to us on. I think next week I'm going to be doing my preview for the next season. So if you want to hear me talk about fr- uh, Free Run, now that I know how to properly pronounce it, if you want to hear me talk about Free Run for about 45 minutes, tune in to next week's episode. Otherwise, Free-ry-ry-ry-ry. no, it's Free Run. We found this out Free-ry-ry. because of the... Free. Uh, the the PV the the trailer that they released is they, that how they do it they, in the treaty? They they, they 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 tell us how to say free run. It's free run. So interesting. I always pronounce it Fryerin, and it's like ah, you're wrong. I'm like okay, cool. Now I know. Um, yeah, but otherwise, if you're here for Watch Club, we will see you two weeks for the Wandering Witch of Elena. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Peace.